iOS 17 was announced in June, showing off a host of new functionality and enhancements. There are updates to wallpapers, messages, photos, sharing, and a whole bunch of new features. Many of these were mentioned in the WWDC keynote, but some were not, and unless you've really dug into iOS 17, you might not know about some of these, or you may have missed them. Now, some of these features are great, or at the very least, interesting, so today I want to review the ones that I think are the most appealing and impactful, and dig into how to set these up and go over how they work. So if you're curious about iOS 17 and all this new functionality, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Like a lot of folks, WWDC was the first look that I got at iOS 17, and ever since watching that event, I've been really looking forward to throwing it on my phone and trying it out. I installed the beta as soon as it came out, and now that I've had some time with it, there's a ton that I've learned and a whole lot packed in here, so let's just dive right into it. We might as well start from the outside and work our way into the phone, so let's go over some of the changes with the lock screen. If I press and hold down my lock screen and hit the customize button, there's a few added features I have in iOS 17 that 16 doesn't have, starting with the clock at the top. There's a couple more font options in here. You'll notice that you can now change the font weight to make the text bolder or thinner. And there's a depth effect toggle to show or hide some of the clock or your widgets behind aspects of the wallpaper that make it feel a little bit more three-dimensional or layered. I really like having more textile options to tailor that to whatever wallpaper I've got selected. And just speaking to wallpapers, we've got some added ones in iOS 17 by default. There's some more under the Unity collection. You've also got this new Kaleidoscope collection that is pretty neat. And the ones that Apple seem to be really excited about, more astronomy options. Earth just looks stunning at this scale. That collection existed before, but now you have all the planets in the solar system in there. So now I can take a quick glance at Uranus anytime the mood feels right. New wallpapers and lock screen styling are neat throw-ins, but the biggest game changer when it comes to the lock screen is a feature called standby. What this does, provided you have a MagSafe charger that sits your phone in an upright horizontal position is allow your iPhone to utilize the always on display to show widgets and display notifications. You can see I can scroll through each column and set it to the date or time and scroll through a calendar, the weather, reminders, that sort of thing. It's almost like a little customizable bedside clock and it's really easy to make sure that this is enabled. All you'll do is open up your settings, scroll down to standby and just make sure that that is toggled on. There's also some other options in here like night mode that will display a red tint with low ambient lighting and motion detection. I can definitely see myself using this at my desk setup and anytime you can utilize something that was just taking up space doing nothing and turn it into something functional, that's a win in my books. Also, I am very curious to see if that will get expanded upon in the future with interesting widgets and functionality. And just speaking of widgets, that was a pretty big theme in all the new Apple software this year. Widgets, 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 widgets. While we've had widgets on iOS for a while now, if you're running iOS 16 or earlier, you'll notice that they aren't interactive. Basically, if you click any widget in those versions, it's just going to open up the corresponding app and that has all changed with iOS 17. Widgets now have the ability to be interactive. So as you can see, if I hold down my home screen and enter jiggle mode, I still can't believe it's called jiggle mode. But anyway, once it's in there, I can go grab a music widget and add that. With that added to my home screen, you'll notice that I can play music right from the widget rather than having it open up the actual app. I can also add things like my to-do list items or reminders and check those off right from my home screen, which is super handy. This would also be good for things like home automation. And I think if you're looking for a quick toggle that you use frequently, interactive widgets have a lot of potential. All right, moving on. That stuff is great for convenience, but some of my favorite features this year are to do with health. The health app itself has a great new addition with something called state of mind, which now allows you to log your emotions and mood. All I need to do here is head into the health app and find it. And it's pretty self-explanatory. State of mind allows you to reflect regularly and keep track of your mental health. It only takes a few seconds to log your mood and you can set up recurring reminders for it if you don't feel like manually doing it yourself each time or you feel like you're gonna forget. I'm really happy to see things like this popping up in iOS on top of the physical health stuff. I think mental health is something a lot of people struggle to maintain so any attempt to try and help out there is a step in the right direction in my books. There's a couple other things that have been added for physical health one of which I relate to but before we get into that I want to talk about this week's sponsor which ties nicely into this health conversation Fit Track. This is the Dara smart body composition scale by FitTrack. This is a pretty unique scale in that it not only connects to your phone and tracks your weight, but also measures 17 unique vital body metrics. All I have to do to get this set up is download the Hue map from the app store, open that up and add the scale through Bluetooth. 
That process is all relatively easy and straightforward. And once my scale has been connected and I have my app open, I can then step on the scale and it'll take its measurements and pass those on to the app. The way that this measures your body composition is through something called bioelectrical impedance analysis. A mouthful, I know, but basically how this works is a weak electrical current goes through your body and a voltage measurement is taken to calculate everything to provide an accurate picture of your health. Like I said, I can see all those metrics in the Hue map and I can click on any of them to see historical data for that metric that breaks these down over the last seven days, four weeks, or a year. And I can also view a progress report diving into my health a little deeper. Not only that, I can also bring in all my Apple health data into this app so I can get a full look at my overall health, including things like sleep tracking and fitness or activity that I track outside of the Hue map. To get these same metrics through a healthcare provider can cost up to $150 each time you take a measurement. With this scale, it's just a one-time purchase and I can take them however often that I want. And with the link provided in the description, you'll get 30% off and another 20% if you use the code Kyle Erickson when you check out. I personally love things like this because you get all those full stats and it can help you sort of gamify your health, similar to closing the rings on your Apple Watch. With that said, let's head back into health on iOS 17. The fitness app now has trainer tips that have been added where the trainer will give you ideas or advice for improving your fitness level, which is kind of neat. But the one thing that hits home for me as it relates to health is something called screen distance. Screen distance has been added to help reduce eye strain, but most importantly, try and mitigate the risk of myopia in children. But for those that don't know, myopia is just nearsightedness, which is what I have, and that usually develops when you're a child. Essentially, when we're looking at screens a lot close up for extended periods of time, that can cause your eye to actually elongate a little bit, which causes that condition. So the hope with this feature is it will combat that a bit. I personally think that's a useful feature to have, especially for kids. To set that up, we're gonna go into settings, screen time and make sure that screen distance is toggled to the on position. Then when the system detects that you're looking at your screen too close, you'll just get a pop-up telling you to move back. And when you pull away, it'll let you know when you're in the clear. While it's been nice to see those features pop up and to play around with them, many of them may not get used by a lot of people, but there are a couple things that almost everyone will notice to some extent, and those are to do with messaging and calling. One of the coolest things that's been added to iOS 17 is a feature called live voicemail. And what that does is transcribe the voicemail as it's being left. And then it gives you the option to pick up the phone or respond by text. So you can essentially screen your calls from people that you maybe don't know or you don't want to talk to. This should be turned on by default, but if it's not, you can go to settings and scroll down to phone and make sure live voicemail is toggled on and that's all you have to do. Similarly, with incoming calls, we can now create something called a contact poster that lets you customize what shows up on the person's phone that you're calling and what your contact card looks like. Now you will have to be in someone's contacts app or address book for this to work, but as long as that is the case, I can go into my contacts contacts app and click my contact card and set this up just like the lock screen. You'll also see that contact poster pop up and be able to share your info easily with a feature called name drop, but I don't believe that's out yet and I haven't tried it, so I can't really comment on it yet, but I am looking forward to it. On the messaging side, I know I can't be the only one who has a ton of messages from verification services. Say if I'm signing up for or logging into a service and they send you those four or six digit passcodes and you need to enter them to verify your phone number, I generally let those pile up in my messages app more than I should, but iOS will now auto delete them. All you need to do to make sure that is enabled is go into your settings under passwords and password options, hit clean up automatically and provided you use the autofill feature in that verification process, iOS will now get rid of those messages for you. Specific to the messages app, I can now swipe on a message to reply to it. I can listen to voice messages outside of the app if I start playing them and then go do something else, which previously wasn't the case. And I can now transcribe these audio messages to text as well. So say someone sends you an audio message and you're in a public place or somewhere that you don't want to play that audio, you'll still be able to read it on the screen. Search in messages has also improved where you can combine filters. You can search for photos and links from a specific person. And it's just generally a little easier to use and find what you're looking for. When writing out messages, autocorrect has improved vastly over iOS 16. It just seems like it's a lot more accurate and I find myself having to go back and fix what I've typed a lot less. If you're someone who swears a lot in your texts, it's a lot better at not correcting those. And overall, it's just been a much better experience. If I hit the plus button beside the message input, the sharing menu pops up and that is much simpler and I think a lot easier to work with. But to my knowledge, this is only in the messages app, but I'd love to see this pop up elsewhere. And you've got some new options in here as well. There's a new feature called check-in, which you can use with your friends and 
and family to let them know that you've arrived at a location or reached a destination. And if you don't arrive, it will share your current details about where you are. That could be really handy, again, if you have kids or if you're traveling with someone. And similarly, you can now share your location with someone directly from the Messages app without going into Apple Maps. The one thing that I like in this menu and that I thought that I wouldn't care about are the updates to stickers. You may or may not have been aware that stickers were available pre-iOS 17, but they have been revamped and are a lot more fun to use. I can drag my stickers anywhere onto the screen onto a message and they'll show up in the chat window for both people. And you can now create stickers from photos, which I've been doing a lot of lately and spamming people with. To do that, I can either hit the plus icon within this sticker sharing menu from the messages app, or I can do it right from within the photos app as well. And it generally does a really good job at picking and cutting out the subject from an image. To make a sticker from inside your photos app, all you have to do is hold down on the image and there will be an add sticker option. And if you have live photos on the sticker, we'll also animate, which is kind of neat. Just diving into the photos app, there have been some other changes in there. It's gotten a lot better with recognition, specifically with animals and pets. You can see in the bottom tab bar, there's either a paw or an icon for your pet. And if I click that, it will give me some info about the animal. It's pretty good at identifying breeds of different pets. And if I click this little icon at the bottom left-hand corner of my image, you can see what will allow me to name my pet. Then if I head over to my albums, I've got a whole album dedicated to that specific pet, which is pretty cool. It's also really good at detecting landmarks. If I have an image of a landmark or a building, I can again hold down that image and it will tell me what it is or where it's located, which is super useful. I was surprised that this works on lesser known locations and I can actually get directions from right inside of here. That takes us into the Maps app where I can now download offline maps. That can be useful for times where you're not gonna have service or data. Maybe you're going somewhere Somewhere that might be spotty or you don't want to get charged for roaming fees if you're traveling. To do that, all I have to do is hit my little avatar and select download new map and enter a location. You can see that once we're in here, it will have this little window that I can adjust for the area that I want to download and it'll let you know how much space the downloaded map will take up. Since we're talking about location services, I should also mention that AirTags are now shareable in iOS 17 and all you need to do to share an AirTag with someone is go into the Find My app click an AirTag and under share this AirTag, I can click add person. That will allow you to share your AirTag with up to five people, which can be highly useful if you've got that attached to a pet or something owned or used by more than one person, or if you leave something or forget something somewhere and you want someone else to pick it up for you. All those features I think are the most significant that I've used. There are a few that I haven't or can't try out yet and a few that I don't use. I will just give a brief honorable mention to a few. AirDrop will be updated with iOS 17 so that when you're AirDropping something to someone else or to another device. If you move too far away, instead of it just cutting out and failing, it will now fall back over an internet or network connection to finish off the transfer. In the notes app, you can now add a link to text very easily by highlighting text and selecting link from the tooltip menu, which you previously couldn't do. And in Safari, you now have a revamped tabs menu and private browsing with advanced features there as well. Private browsing is now locked by default and you'll need to use biometrics to unlock pages and tabs that you have open. And finally, if you're someone that uses FaceTime, if you call someone and they don't answer, you can now leave a recorded message for them. I personally don't really use FaceTime, but I know a lot of folks do, so that's probably worth mentioning. For me, the features that I like the most in here are the visual and interactive ones, like the updates to widgets and the stickers and photo app enhancements. There's a whole bunch of additions to other apps and devices that I haven't even touched on, but I think the ones that I touched on today will likely be the most used or the most important to some extent. But with that said, let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see more of these types of videos, whether that's for iOS, iPad OS, Mac OS, or Watch OS. Also, I'd love to know if you've tried iOS 17, what are your favorite features and thoughts so far? That's it for me today. I hope you found this video useful or entertaining. If you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see more tech-related content or brush each other's teeth while blindfolded, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next upload.